Hello folks and welcome back to the Oak Factory. I have the pleasure today to present to you the fruits of a collaboration that I made with some of my doll artist friends. This was intended to be a pride collab, but due to some unfortunate events, we had to push the deadline and we chose today because July 14th is non-binary day. It's also non-binary visibility week. We wanted the collaboration to be about the trans community in some way, especially since all three of us do fall under that umbrella. I highly suggest that you go and check Dolly Mixtures and Fairykin's videos. We really all poured our hearts and our souls into this collab and we are definitely very proud of it. I left links to their channels in the description box below and in the pinned comment if I have not forgotten, of course. I hope you will enjoy our videos and our creations. That being said, let's get into the creation of my doll and... You know what, maybe you should pause the video right there and go get a drink and a snack. Because, well, uh, I'm going to open up about some things that I've been wanting to make public for a very long time, so... Yeah, so fair warning, the video I had may contain feels. You okay? So let's do this. I made this doll using a Monica DK Monster Eye doll. She is a bit on the rare side, but I was extremely lucky because a friend of mine gave one to me that was pretty much fresh out of the box and complete. It was a gift from a very close friend and that doll was chosen because we thought that she resembled me a little bit. And yes, you heard right, this doll is a self-portrait. This year I celebrate pride by making a doll of my queer person. I thought this could also be kind of a nice mascot for the channel. Monica has a very interesting build. I feel like she's a bit thicker body-wise and her face is very unique. I think nobody else has a smirk quite like hers. I absolutely love her and I'm kind of a bit sad to kind of destroy her what she is but it's part of the process so let's go, let's embrace it. Like usual, I need to strip her of her hair and erase the face paint with acetone to start with a clean canvas. This video did not take me too long to film, but the last few weeks were a roller coaster. A distant family relative passed away and I've been under some stress. But with all of that also came, honestly, some of the best news well for for the future, for my future. But before I get into details about that though, I want to come back here to the doll, because I'm about to do something I get asked questions about very often. So how to seamlessly paint the doll's whole body without an airbrush? I use acrylic paints, and the secret is to actually thin the paint with a little bit of water. I use a premix shade, but you can mix your own without any issues. The ratio of paint to water is about, I'd say, 75 to 25%, maybe up to one third water, but not more. You want the pigment to stay on the surface, even if it's sheer. I'd recommend you take a soft brush and apply many thin coats of paint. Try to avoid leaving texture bubbles, and top shop any area that might let the paint pool a little bit. Let dry between each coat as to not rub the pigment off accidentally with your brush. It may take a lot of time, but if you are careful, once the color becomes fully opaque, it should be smooth. I use the same process on the body, usually working in sections and hanging it to dry. If you see any dust or hair or undesirable texture on the doll, you can use fine grit sandpaper to touch it up once the last layer you put in is dry. Then you can continue to apply more thin coats of paint to smooth it out. And yes, this can mean that you have to apply a lot and a lot of coats. 
I think I did about 20 on Monica's head, but since the coats are thin, it dries pretty fast. I also have a ceiling fan running in the summer, so it helps a lot. Once that done, I give her a scalp a coat of brown paint and I jumped into the face up. So, well, there's something that I've been very excited but hesitant to say in public. Something only my few closest friends and my lover knows. My family also doesn't quite know yet either, though I've started talking about it uh, with them. And, well, that's been stressing me out, but it's really positive. I'm just, I'm just really nervous. I also know that I won't be able to hide it forever as, as things go forward, so here. I am transgender. I'm not trans as in, yeah, Sasha, we know that you're non-binary, which is, well, still valid, but also, I'm also transgender as in, I'm looking into hormone replacement therapy and surgery. It's, it's been on my mind for years, and it, it took me long enough to allow myself to question how I truly felt about being born female. The short answer is empty. I felt very empty and I was clueless as to why. And it was like every time I stepped out in public, even in front of the people I genuinely loved and care about, I had to play a role, so... So they think I'm pretty and that I have my stuff together while inside I was I wasn't able to truly connect to this to this person that I was portraying to this identity. And it's it's strange because I love feminine aesthetics and I love a lot of things deemed feminine but I guess more in the artistic way. I I tried applying it to myself and I would always go back feeling like it wasn't working, that that it wasn't for me, and even if, really, I became quite good at it. When I moved in with my gorgeous, beautiful girlfriend years ago, I, I decided to drop the act, at least at home, and it really felt like I left a huge dead weight in the past. And it made me reevaluate re so many aspects of my life. I could never go back to that headspace. And you know, I, I still love a lot of things considered girly. I mean, I'm a doll artist. And I know we have amazing men in the community. No shade to them, really. I admire most of them, but. I still think that a lot of people from outside the community might think that it's a woman thing. And I would not blame them because we associate dolls as, well, as being toys for little girls. Though, weirdly enough, when I was a kid, it was my very cisgender heterosexual little brother who enjoyed playing with my dolls more than I did. His favorite was my uh, Cellar Jupiter one. And me, I wanted these Pokemon figures, especially that Flareon. I idolized hyperfeminity most of my life, and honestly, it's such, it's such an exhausting thing to have on your shoulders, or at least it has been for me. And yes, one of the first thoughts that I had in my process was to wonder that I was not just some frustrated feminist or something. But turned out that there was more, and I fought those thoughts for a long time, but they stayed. They persevered. It scared me, and honestly, the last thing you want to hear is, oh, but you just want to do it because it's trendy. And I know I'll hear it, and it might come from people close to me. And I also said it to myself a few times. But again, some thoughts and some feelings, they lingered still. They're still here. They never went away. What do you do then? Well, I'm 33 at the moment. 
so I wanted to take a rational approach to the issue. I contacted the specialized clinic in my city, and for a few months, after a long wait, I saw a psychologist whose job was to evaluate trans people and help them move forward in the process if they need it. And I am going forward. Let's take a break here. I want to talk about how I made the hair because I don't think I've ever documented in details that process. I am using a pulling technique. I'll link a video in the description box for it, but basically it's a technique that allows you to keep the yarn as long as you can. I sadly don't have much footage of it, but I'm mostly using it to blend the different shades of yarn by pulling the fibers of different shades of yarn together in small batches. I also kept a comb and a brush and also my flat iron at my side to help me with the process. I mixed three shades to give the result a number effect. Then I used my trusty Mod Podge to glue the hair directly on the doll's head. I used the darkest shades at the bottom and kept the lighter shades at the top. And also, I glued the hair on the head just like I would some wefts. I started at the base of the scalp, where usually you see the neck, and I am going up in a circular motion, layer by layer, spiraling until I reach the top, where I will create a part. To make the part as clean as possible, I transformed the remaining hair into clean wefts using Mod Podge once again. It doesn't show, but I used a bit of pencil to mark where I want the part to be in the end. The idea then is to glue the wefts going in the opposite direction, and when they are fully dry, flip them over to hide the glue. I'm doing this one side at a time. Once done, the result can be pretty seamless, but I do find it sometimes a bit hard to gauge just how thick you want the hair to be in the area around the part, so sometimes I do go back with touch-ups. Also, I use the hot butter knife that I heated in my flat iron to press the part flat, literally molding a fold into the fibers. Then it was time for a haircut. As much as I like long ginger hair, mine's shorter, so I got an eyebrow razor to help me with the job. I used to, well, have extremely long ginger hair, down to my butt even. It was so much work to maintain, to be honest, and I don't regret chopping it off. But if you had said that to me 10 years ago, I might have told you flat that I would never dare to. I think it became such a trans-masculine cliché. Girly girl discovers she's a guy by daring to chop her precious locks off. It, it feels like long hair always have been such a big symbol of femininity. Women 50 years ago or so would get frowned upon for wanting short hair like a boy. But honestly, it really was freeing for me to cut it off. It really was. I'm really trying my best to be at ease with all the sides of me that could be seen as feminine. And there was a time during those last few years where that very thought of being a little feminine was driving me crazy and pissing me off each time. 
and whenever I judged that I expressed something along those lines, there was a voice inside my head that was so quick to go and invalidate me and everything that I was, everything that I thought, everything that I felt. But really, there is no one way to be. You don't have to fit into boxes made by other people and fit into their idea of what a person should be. And rules, they can be bent, they can be broken. I think this concept can be hard to grasp genuinely for some people, depending on age, background, and a lot more factors. And honestly, that's fine. I'm not doing this video so people understand me. The only thing I would want from those around me is that they keep respecting me the same way after they're learned who I really am. And maybe some of you watching might not like me being trans. And again, that's okay. You're okay, you're fine. I won't be angry at anyone. I'm not angry at you. I'm not angry at your neighbor, and I'm not angry at the universe. Just don't expect me to engage with any form of hateful comments or with trolls. It's not gonna happen. I might even delete some comments if I judge they go too far, but that's the most I will do with it. It's just that my validity and my identity is not up for debate. And it goes the same for all other human beings. I won't budge on that, it's, it's one of my core beliefs. I know it's my second video where I talk about very important stuff and feelings, and I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, and I understand that, I respect that too, but I'd rather be out now that anxiously wait behind some veiled truths until I can't hide it anymore. Until, for example, that my voice deepens, which is actually something I'm very excited about. So here, formally, I am Sasha. My pronouns are he, him, and they, them. I'm a trans guy. Nice to meet you. If you have questions, go ahead. Some folks don't like it when people ask stuff. But I happen to be someone who is not very shy about many a thing, so please ask away. I will try to answer as many comments as I can in a respectful manner. And that's my personal take on it. Though I also need to talk about other things, again, related to LGBTQ plus stuff. Yes, it's a pride video, so it's on topic. Okay, so... Our world has never been this open to queer people as it is right now. Also, as a Canadian, I can say that even though there are always risks, I feel mostly safe in my city, but not all folks can say the same. Many countries still outlaw homosexuality there is a death penalty for it. Being trans can be seen as a crime, or as a reason for others to enact violence against a lot of people. We we'll still need, as queer folks, to fight for our right to live as who we are without fearing for our safety. There are a lot of aspects to it, and I'm not the best to talk about it, but this needed to be said still. There are also movements trying to go against us here in North America and in the UK and other countries you'd think are most open to all of this. There are also queer activists trying to drop the T in LGBT and that's definitely, definitely concerning. I will also point out that there are people who think our existence erase their own. I find it scary, frustrating, and also honestly sad. Because in my eyes, the point of all of this can be resumed to one word, kindness. We need our allies, and we need our queer siblings 
to fight with us if they can. We need to spread kindness, knowledge, and awareness. This is our fight. Pride was also a fight. It was a riot initiated by drag queens and trans women of color. A riot that was against police brutality, if I may add. This is a powerful legacy. We can't stop the fight now. We owe it to them. And we also need to remember to be kind to others around us. Not everyone has the same level of privilege, and some allies and queer siblings might not be able to fight. Some are in danger, some are exhausted. We need to respect that. Again, it, it's about kindness. To all my allies out there, thank you. And if you want to do more, support trans and queer artists, activists, and businesses with your time, your click, or your money if you can. A little can go a long way. It makes a difference, and it's important. It does save lives. If I had not been in a safe place when I started realizing why I felt so empty inside, who knows what I could have done to myself. I'm a strong 30-something adult now. But not all of us are just as lucky as I am. And that, that is terrifying. Honestly, terrifying. I'm, I'm really sorry that I got this passionate here and now, I mean, gosh, this voiceover is so hard, but this is extremely important to me. I have a close-knit queer family of friends and loved ones, and I care so much about all of them. We all wish the best for those we love, do we? We are all the same. We are all human. I thought I was like, dang it, I have a platform. Why not use it to uplift what I think is important, right? And of course I discussed it all while you watch me transplant new feet on the doll that I am making. 10 out of 10 on timing. But yeah, I, I was not gonna settle for high heels. I mean, they are as painful to wear as they are beautiful. I love sneakers, so I got sneakers. But to make sure they fit, I had to casually steal the feet of a BTS male fashion doll and use epoxy sculpts to blend them to Monica's legs. I think it succeeded quite well. And I don't mind the size because... I always had quite big feet for a 5 foot 3 person and <laughs> most shoes in women's sections have sizes only up to the one right before mine. Oopsie. Who else has trouble finding shoes in their size? I can't be the only one. Okay, so the next part was actually very fun. I decided to add tattoos to the doll. I actually have six of them right now, and there are even more on my wish list. I have a Japanese kanji on my chest. It's the word kaze that means wind. I also have half a sleeve on my left arm, featuring a black widow spider on a web and some slings around her. On my back, I have a triketra, which is a Celtic symbol. The others are on my forearms. On the left, I have the name of the goddess Ekate written along with Soteira, which is one of her titles, meaning savior. On the right side, I have a treble clef and a tiny semicolon. The one I'm painting right now has been on my wish list for ages, and if you guess Baby Xenomorph, you win! Alien is my favorite movie franchise of all times, and I like Prometheus, but I don't talk about Covenant. I'm painting all of these using mostly black, because I don't want much color on my body. It's so much harder to maintain than just black ink, so I went with something simple and timeless. Also, you win if you notice the top surgery scars on the chest.
in the end, I went a lot into it and ended up blushing the body and adding a lot more tattoos, just, just for the fun of it, including a very strange fuck face on the lower back. I had fun with it honestly and I think this is what counts as the most important. I also added my ring. This ring used to belong to my girlfriend's mother, who passed away from cancer in 2020. It's honestly one of my treasures, so it had to be there. The purple butterfly is a symbol that represents one of my health issues. If you know, you know. And now that everything is done, I think I show you the end result. I hope, sincerely hope you'll like it. Well, this was a hard one. I still do hope that you like the result. But please, please, please go check the dolls by my friends Fairykin and Dolly Mixtures. We really worked hard and you'd be supporting queer people. In the meantime though, please, please, please be safe. And I'll see you on the next one.